When we make calculations in science and technology, it usually involves measurements, and therefore units. Dimensional analysis is simply keeping track of these units to confirm our methods. I'll split dimensional analysis into three main techniques here. Number one, unit conversions. Number two, verifying an answer. And number three, verifying a formula. When doing unit conversions, it can sometimes be confusing to determine whether we multiply or divide a conversion factor. In fact, there might even be multiple conversion factors involved, which can make it even more confusing. For instance, if we're told that your 50 meter run took 6.6 .6 seconds, nicely done by the way, and you were curious to see your average speed in kilometers per hour, what would you do? Well, first of all, let's lay out the required conversion factors. We know that there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Also, we know that in one hour, there are 60 minutes and 60 seconds per minute, so 60 times 60, 3,600 seconds total in every hour. So to ensure that we get our conversion factors straight, we just look closely at the units like this. So 7.6 meters per second, and we put the one kilometer on the top so that we have our 1,000 meters on the bottom. And that way, we can cancel out the meters. And we'd be left in kilometers for our final answer, which is exactly what we want. Then we have the 3,600 seconds on the top so that the seconds can cancel out, and we're left with the one hour on the bottom. Now an hour on the bottom is also perfect for what we want in our final answer. So now we know that we've got our conversion factors straight. So we know that we divide by 1,000 and then multiply by 3,600 to come up with 27 kilometers per hour. Wow, that's pretty fast. So that's dimensional analysis with unit conversions, just helping us keep things straight. Next, let's look at verifying an answer using dimensional analysis. If we were given the following equation, along with measurements, we could lay it out as such. d equals v naught t plus 1 half a t squared, where we know that the v naught is 4 meters per second, the t is 3 seconds, and the a is 9.8 meters per second squared. If we lay it out here, we have 4 in for our v naught, and then 3 seconds in for our t, 1 half, 9.8 meters per second squared, with 3 seconds. Now, in the second row here, what we'll do is we'll square the 3 seconds. So now we see that in the first term, the seconds can cancel out. We have 1 on the bottom, and 1 on the top. And in the second term, we have seconds squared on the bottom and a second squared on the top, and these can cancel out. And so what we have left in the first term is meters, and in the second term, once we cancel these out, we're also left with meters. So if we look at that, we're solving for d, or displacement, in meters. The first term is basically what would happen if we were going at a constant velocity? That's how far we would get in meters. And in the second term, we have some additional acceleration. So that's the additional displacement that we would expect. Also in meters, we add those together and we end up with an answer in meters. And that basically confirms that we laid things out right. Our last use of dimensional analysis here is a combination of the first two uses. It's to verify a formula. So rather than doing a calculation, as in the item two, in this case, we just want to confirm that a formula makes sense. So we're not really plugging in any numbers. We're just going to put in units to verify that this formula is laid out appropriately. For instance, if we're trying to remember if our equation for velocity without acceleration is 
v equals t over d, or whether it's v equals d over t. We could simply consider that velocity could be in meters per second, time standard in seconds, and of course distance or displacement would be in meters. Thus, v equals t over d could be written as meters per second on the left. Note that we often use the square brackets when we're showing only units. And on the right, we have seconds on the top and meters on the bottom. So meters per second on the left and seconds per meter on the right. And this doesn't make sense. These aren't consistent. So this can't be right. Let's look at the other one. V equals D over T. On the left again, meters per second. And on the right, D is meters and T is seconds, which gives us meters per second. Meters per second equals meters per second. Yeah, that's a lot more sensible. So now we can confirm that the second equation makes a lot more sense. It's much more likely to be our correct solution. A more complicated version of verifying a formula here. So it might look like this. D equals V naught T plus one half A T. So it looks a bit familiar. Since D is displacement, that's in meters. The velocity V naught is in meters per second. The time would be in seconds. Now the one half here is just a constant and it doesn't have any units. So in dimensional analysis, we just ignore that. Now next is the acceleration, and acceleration is in meters, and on the bottom, seconds squared. And the last time here is in seconds. So let's cancel out and see what works out here. So at the beginning, meters, and then in the first term, the seconds cancel out, left with meters, and in the third term, the second on the top cancels out with only one of the seconds on the bottom, so that leaves a second on the bottom. Hmm. So our first term is meters, our second term is meters, and our last term is meters per second. Now, combining meters and meters per second does not make sense. So that would make us stop and say, hmm, we did something wrong with this formula. Perhaps we wrote it down wrong. So we go back to our equation sheet and we double check and sure enough, we forgot the squared on the end of the t here. Now if the t were squared, we'd end up with second squared on the top which would cancel out with the second squared on the bottom and that would have made it work. So in fact, verifying this formula just saved us from an error here. So in this little tutorial, we considered dimensional analysis and three extremely useful ways to use it, all focused around units. The first was unit conversions and keeping track of those units so we get our conversion straight. The second is verifying an answer. When we work through a problem, if we keep track of the units, we can verify that we didn't mess anything up along the way. And third, if we're getting a little mixed up on what a formula should look like, sometimes stopping and putting units in place will help us verify that we got it straight or point out when we made a little mistake. Now all of these are very related but also quite powerful in their own right. So now you understand dimensional analysis, what it is, and three very useful ways to use it.